So we know that uh, if you exercise, and I, and I say this, uh, exercise is really good for you in a number of ways. Flexibility, strength, core, all kinds of things. So very, very important. But in terms of weight loss, it's actually a very, very small effect. Why? Because one, the amount of calories you burn during exercise are simply not that high. So if you look at, you know, if you do walking, I mean, if you did eight hours of high intensity exercise, yeah, you're going to burn a lot of calories. But most people I deal with, which are sort of middle-aged and higher, you're talking about sort of a quick walk or, you know, 45, half an hour, three times a week sort of thing. And if you ever go on the treadmill and you ever watch that calorie counter on the treadmill, <laughs> you know, it goes up very, very slowly, right? You'll do half an hour and it'll be up to like, 120 calories or something like that, right? So that exercise really didn't burn off very many calories. It's the amount that you'd get in a couple of cookies, for example, right? So it's it's just numerically, it's just very small. So if you're you're taking in, if your body is normally using 2000 calories with your brain generating body heat, your heart, your lungs, your liver, they're using 2000 calories. And now you go up to 2100 calories. Well, percentage wise, it's not a huge deal. Right. The other problem with exercise is that it tends to actually cause you to eat more. So uh, again, we've had decades of study for this. If you exercise during the exercise, you have uh, lost uh, reduced appetite. So you have exercise. It's called exercise induced anorexia. So in the middle of a basketball game, you don't suddenly go, oh, wow, I'm really hungry, right? Because your, your blood is flowing in your, you know, in your muscles and so on. Uh, you're not thinking about the hunger. So hunger actually goes down during exercise. But after exercise, we see this rebound. So we see that people are actually more hungry after exercise. And if you're hungrier after exercise, it's going to cause you to tend to gain more weight. In fact, there's this very interesting study that was done a few years ago in Harvard where they measured the sort of calorie difference that you get with uh, for, for children um, in certain activities. So they said, okay, what if a child is watching TV? What's the average uh, caloric difference? And it was like plus 100 calories per hour. So for every hour of TV, they're sort of positive 100 calories over time, right? And that makes sense. You're just sitting there. When you look at mild exercise, it's about the same. It's about positive 100 calories. So the only way that happens is that if that exercise is causing you to eat more, right? And you say, well, why are you eating more? It's like, well, because you're you're hungry. Like the exercise is inducing you to eat more. And that's going to make it difficult to lose weight. You so, say in the book in chapter four that 95% of weight loss is diet. Yeah. And that's the reason why exercise is very hard to exercise enough to lose weight. And, and and that's not to say that you shouldn't exercise. It's it you really should exercise. Everybody should exercise. But if you're trying to lose weight, you still got to focus on the main topic, which is the foods that you eat, which is not just the calories. It's about the types of food that you eat, which is going to affect the hormonal balance and also how often you eat. If you're eating all the time versus if you're eating only eating very infrequently, then you're going to have a different hormonal balance that is going to affect your weight as well. An American survey of more than six, this impact on my hormones, yeah. which is going to have this impact on my body. So if we view food as an instruction to the body, we talked a little bit about the timings of eating and a little bit about fasting. I want to get into that a little bit more, but breakfast. I read that you didn't think most people need breakfast. Yeah, the, the whole idea that you need to eat as soon as you get up is just false. So there's this whole um, thing about breakfast. Now you will always break your fast. Think about the actual word, right? Break fast. It's the meal that breaks your fast, which tells you that in the English language, we accept that your body should have a fasting period every day. Why? There's a period of time that you're supposed to feed, you eat, insulin goes up, you store calories. Then there's supposed to be a period of time that you fast. That's after dinner until the next day's meal, which is breakfast, right? So you say you stop eating at 6 p.m., you eat at 8 a.m. That's a 14 hour period where your body 
is not eating, it's fasting, and therefore it's going to use calories, right? But the word breakfast tells us that that's actually a normal pattern, this normal cyclical pattern. You feed, then you fast, right? If you eat all the time, your body's just going to store energy and never have a period to burn energy. So, okay, well, what's going to happen? You're going to gain weight. I read as well that breakfast eaters averaged 539 extra calories per day compared to those that skipped breakfast. And that's a finding that's consistent with other trials. That was on page 132 of the obesity code. Yeah, so the more often you eat in general, the more calories you take in. So if you eat three times a day, you or six times a day, then, you know, if you eat three times a day compared to two times a day, for example, you'll in general eat less because it's harder to eat that you know, big meal. So say you eat once a day versus three times a day. If you eat once a day, it's not always easy to eat three meals worth of calories all in one sitting because you get full. Do you fast? Oh, I do that regularly, yeah. And what, so, what does your fast look like? Because I've heard of all these different types of fasting, 36 hours, 72 hours, oh, yeah. 14 hours. Yeah. There's no rules for fasting. You could do... You know, it could be 16 hours. So 14 hours, remember, is sort of a baseline, 12 to 14 hours, right? That just means you're not eating after dinner. That's it. Um, and so if you want to lose weight, that's probably not strong enough to make you lose weight because 12 to 14... So if all foods then increase our insulin levels, I guess the best solution is to fast. Uh, fasting is certainly one way, but just changing the foods to uh, other ones because if you look at the insulin uh release in processed foods versus unprocessed foods there's a huge difference so if you eat sort of uh highly refined foods like white bread for example then you're going to have a very different response in insulin compared to sort of um a whole a whole food so uh, unprocessed foods in general your body knows how to handle like we've been eating them for thousands of years um, but certainly anytime you eat, your insulin is going to go up. You're giving your body instructions to store energy. So the solution is to eat less often. What if you do a juice fast? Juice fast, of course, is not a real fast because you're, you're taking a lot of sugars. What do you um, think of juice fasting? Um, I'm generally, I, I, I think it's less effective than regular fasting. And it really depends on how much juice you take. If you take a lot of juice, you could easily get, you know, thousands of calories plus a lot of sugar. If you do it, you know, cucumber juice and stuff that's very low in sugar and kale juice, then it could be very, very healthy for you because there's vitamins and stuff there. So it, it all depends on how it's done. However, the, um, the fasting is a way for you to sort of clean out the body. So you can clean out the glucose. If you have excess body fat, you're, you're going to use it, right? So again, way to clean it out. And then there's this whole process called autophagy, which is just fascinating. And autophagy is this, um, so it's been very topical because in 2016, one of the key researchers was given the Nobel Prize in medicine. So it's, it's a very important process that's been relatively recently discovered. And what they discovered is that when you don't eat protein particularly, but when you fast, your body activates this thing called autophagy and it breaks down some of the subcellular organs, which sounds really bad. Subcellular organ organs. Yeah. So, uh, you know, these are sort of like the organs within the cell. So it's not like the liver, but uh, there's something called organelles within a cell. And some of that is broken down. So basically these proteins and so on within the cell, your body gets rid of that. And you think, oh, well, that sounds really bad. But it's not. It turns out that it's very, very good for you because it's an opportunity for your body to get rid of all this old protein, old junky protein. And at the same time, remember that you're fasting, your growth hormone levels are shooting up through the roof. So like a you know two, three day fast, your growth hormone levels might have go up five times. So you're getting rid of all the old stuff. And then when you eat again, you actually got growth hormone to produce new proteins. So in essence, you're getting rid of the old, you're bringing in the new. It's basically the process of rejuvenation.